For this example, we'll use the PidBot tuning dashboard component to tune a temperature control loop. We have a steam valve, TCV10, that is adjusting steam flow into this heat exchanger. On the other side of the exchanger, we have process fluid flowing, and we need to control the outlet temperature of the process fluid. So we'll do that using PID controller TC10. So I'll open up the tuning dashboard component for TC10, and we'll start recording data. And I've also placed some controls here on the bottom below the tuning dashboard component so we can interact with the PID controller for tuning. I'll go ahead and put the controller in manual. And you want to allow your process to reach a steady state. In our case, the process is already pretty steady around 150 degrees. It's got a little bit of noise in temperature, but the, the process itself is pretty steady. And you also want to make sure that you're doing your test at the normal operating condition of your process. So in our case, we typically control around 150 degrees. So we're already at our normal operating condition and our, uh, our process is nice and steady. So we can go ahead and bump the process. We're around 66% on the valve. Let's go down to 50. And you want to make sure you bump the process fairly sharply so that your response is far beyond any noise or disturbances in the temperature data. And in our case, we have a very clear response to our change in valve position. And it's also a good idea to bump the process again and in the other direction in case it behaves a little bit differently on the way up. I'll go to 85% on the valve. And again, we have a nice clear response in temperature and it is right around our normal operating condition. So we can use that data to create a model. We'll do that on the second tab. You wanna select the type of process model that you're gonna use. And in our case, we're gonna use the first order plus dead time model. And that's always the case or almost always the case for temperature control loops. If you mouse over these buttons, it shows you what a typical response would look like for the first order process. When you step the CV, you eventually reach a new steady state, whereas the integrating process does not reach a steady state. It would continue increasing or decreasing forever. So we're going to start our model at a time where the, the process is at a steady state and we'll just drag over across our first bump test. We can model that range and we can model the second bump again starting at steady state and if we want we can do a model of both bumps together and down here we have our process models and the average process model. So that looks pretty good. We can now go to the third tab where we tune our PID controller. So here's a simulated set point step response with our existing tuning values shown in gray here. And the, the temperature response looks a bit sluggish. The blue line represents the response with the new tuning values that are suggested by PidBot. And we can play around with those values. We can make that go faster if we like or slower, or maybe we want to do proportional integral and derivative, or maybe proportional only. In our case, we'll stick with the PI controller. 
but you could also manually adjust the tuning values and PidBot's gonna show you what that response might look like with our modeled process. But we'll stick with the PidBot suggested values and we'll pick a point with not much overshoot and we wanna make sure that we can tolerate this much control action and in our case we can so this looks great we're gonna accept those values and we can see that PidBot has written our new values into our PID controller and we are ready to test so let's go back to the recording area put our PID controller in auto and let's step the set point back down to 150 degrees And so we can see our temperature response looks pretty good. It, we have a little bit of overshoot, just like we modeled, but it's nice and steady right at the new set point. 